Hi, I'm Tim Hoffman, the IT security lead for UCSF, and I'd like to talk to you about security. Today, more than ever, security is a requirement. It's a requirement not just of the job, but it's a responsibility of the job. Every enterprise, that's every company, every organization, is basically driven by data. They collect data, all kinds of data. Think about the kinds of data that you come up against every day, that you touch, that you see, that you share, that you process. Well, the good news is we like to keep control. Technology actually helps keep control of that data, but it isn't enough. The laws that we are faced with today are some of the most stringent because HIPAA, not a female hippopotamus, HIPAA, Healthcare Insurability, Portability, and Accountability Act has fines into the seven digits. We're talking about a capability of an organization, the Health and Human Services folks, who have a law arm called the Office for Civil Rights, who basically look to put fines on people. They just added 160 enforcers. That's right, enforcers. If you want to take a look at the lower right-hand corner of this slide, you're going to see the gentleman who's in charge. Um, he's pretty impressive. He's got a very impressive background. Now, what's going on in the real world is that the press is looking for a sound bite. They're looking for anything that's negative. If the press approaches you, you are not to give a comment. And that's not from Tim Hoffman. That's not from UCSF. That's from the highest levels of our organization. And the reason why is because if something can be held against the university, it will. There should be no negative spotlight. We all have an ethical and a moral responsibility to guard the patient privacy. Patients deserve privacy. All right, let's talk about patient privacy. You're going to deal with different types of information, and there's a distinction. Protected health information is covered by HIPAA. Personally identifiable information is not. The reason for the distinction is that there's a lot of confusion about what is and what isn't PHI. I'm going to suggest that you look at the UCSF Privacy Handbook. There's a handbook that's been put out that gives you an indication of all of the markers of what PHI are, and that's too extensive to go into for a short briefing like this. Now, some of the issues that we face on campus from a security perspective include phishing, theft and loss, especially of laptops and portable devices, malware, insider misconduct, and illegal file sharing, and I will cover each of these for you. First up, phishing. If it feels like you've won a million dollars, if it feels like you've lost a million dollars, if it feels like someone has shut off your bank account, stop, pay attention to your gut. Actually pay attention to what's happening inside of you because if you are exuberant, very happy, or you feel like you've lost everything, likelihood's pretty good you've been a, a person who has been confronted by a scam. You've been duped. I don't want to say anything bad, but the bad people are out there and they are targeting you as an individual who has important information. That's the reason why we talk about PHI so much. An example of phishing might be where it looks very official, it comes in via email, and you should be alarmed because it either takes away your bank account, it takes away your access to your account. It's a message even from your boss that says you're no longer uh, going to be allowed to get to your accounts. Stop, think about what's being said, and then connect up with the security department. Ask us the questions. Uh, the help desk as well can answer some of the questions, but we're here to help you. Theft and loss is a very big problem on the campus. Theft and loss actually is one of the biggest problems because this is where we are exposed to the potential for breach of PHI. Now, what are we talking about? Number one, do not leave your laptop in the back seat of your car when you go into a restaurant or any other establishment. Even the cleaners for five minutes. We've had a rash of folks getting their car broken into because they just parked out front for what seemed to be a minute, got held up for a second, they came back, and you can take a look at the picture for yourself. Another place you lose devices are, include airports, restaurants, throwing your uh, purse with your cell phone over the back of your seat, all of those are, are areas that you could lose a device. 
So what happens when you lose the device? That's what we have to talk to now is, who do you call? You call the UCSF Police Department. You can call the local police department if you're in Rome, Italy, or you happen to be in Taiwan, or you're out and about. The point is, the UCSF Police Department have to collect the information and present it to our risk department so that it can be processed against our insurance. This is really important. How do you do that? You call the police department directly, or you can call the help desk and they'll tell you the, to do the same thing. The service desk is the right place, 514-4100. You can also send us an email. In terms of some of the nasty things you might see in uh, the environment, you might see malware. The word malware just means bad where. Where is the short form of software, bad software. There's different types of bad software out there. There's viruses, spyware, adware, and I could go on for days. The point is, if you're doing something to share files, you're going to bad sites. By bad sites, I mean you're going using your web browser to a website that you shouldn't be going to, whether it's gambling or pornography or anything else. If you're visiting those types of sites, you definitely should not be doing that on company time. Insider misconduct. Well, here's where if you're doing um, research or you're doing uh, medical record lookup, or you're doing uh, your job, perhaps as a doctor, as a nurse, as a, a member of the staff, you realistically should not have access to, let's say, a celebrity's medical record. Uh, let's use a current celebrity, Lindsay Lohan, were to come in and were to be treated for a broken arm, a broken leg, anything. What happens sometimes is that the uh, insiders in the organization will try to look up information to sell to an organization like TMZ or some other outside organization, some news organization. And remember I said earlier that news organizations are looking for the soundbite. So there should be no sharing of PHI. There should never be any lookup of any record that you're not personally assigned to for treatment or for billing purposes or for processing purposes. Another point here is you should never uh, dispose of hard drives, hardware, in an inappropriate way. You'll see the picture here on the slide that looks like someone has thrown a hard drive into a recyclable container. Those should be turned in. Again, calling the service desk or calling security, we will get those crushed for you properly. Another area of uh, real concern is insider uh, file sharing with each other where you're sharing illegal content. Now, what is illegal content? We're talking about movies, we're talking about books, we're talking about copyrighted uh, intellectual property material that should not be shared. Nevertheless, it shows up on our uh, network from time to time. I'm encouraging you to stay away from those events and to notify someone if you're aware of them because the DCMA uh, law requires uh, reporting and there are fines associated with that as well. Now, how do you maintain IT security? If you're going to do your part, we're going to do our part, how do you maintain IT security? First and foremost, do your best to prevent theft and loss. Put things away, lock things up, close the doors, ask people for badges, be a security watchdog. Every organization needs everyone to be on the alert. Number two, encrypt, encrypt, encrypt. I did say it three times. Number three, any computer that is used for UCSF business must be encrypted and must have antivirus and must meet the password standards and the general good practices that are found in the minimum security standards on the UCSF website. Um, the most important thing you can do is just be aware of who's looking at what, why are they looking, how are things happening. In terms of preventing theft and loss, keep your stuff in your possession at all times. Be aware. Situa situational awareness is something you're going to need. Uh, use cable locks if you're using a laptop. And by all means, report it to the UCSF Police Department and the IT Service Desk if you get a lost laptop or what you believe to be a stolen laptop. Encryption is a very important process. What this is, and there are many sophisticated uh, terms around it, 
all we're doing is we're taking the information and we're scrambling it so the bad uh, influence can't get to it, so the bad guy or bad lady can't get to it. It's one step removed, that's all it is. It just slows down an attacker. It doesn't prevent the attacker from getting the information if they're truly intending to get it. So what should you do? You should install PGP, pretty good privacy. It's free, it scrambles the data, it adds that layer of protection, it basically is going to require that you take the time to stop and identify whether or not your device is encrypted. If you have a Windows device, you can go and take a look in the settings to see if it has BitLocker installed. If you have a Mac device, you can go and take a look in the um, chooser to find where File Vault 2 is installed. That's the encryption process for both of those types of operating systems. You can install PGP on uh, computers, laptops, external drives, flash drives. You really should have some form of encryption on your devices. Additionally, you should have Crash Plan as your external backup if you're backing up data. Talking about antivirus, we have an automatic and free installation of Symantec here at UCSF. One thing you can do that will help you one step further is to identify the types of files that you might be clicking on. And believe me, the bad guys are pretty crafty. They will do everything to obscure whether or not you're clicking on a .exe, .bat, .com, etc. file. If you see those types of files, stop and think and ask yourself, should I be clicking on this? Again, don't visit questionable websites. Uh, keep in mind that it is illegal to download copyrighted material onto a UCSF computer. Again, proper password use. A lot of folks use passwords like 12345, uh, football. Uh, if you take a look on Google, you'll see that there's a, uh, a string you can put in uh, for most commonly used passwords, and you'll see that there's an image that pops up of the 25 most used passwords. Another thing we find a lot is that there are people who tend to use sports teams as part of their password. What we're going to suggest here is that you take the time to create a strong password from a very long summer. So last summer, I went boating on Lake Michigan. Sounds like a long bunch of words, but if you take the first character of each of those words and compress it, you now have something that you can hold on to that you know that you're going to remember, and now you have an easy way of remembering a very long password. So think about password creation, password use. Think about not writing down the password or never, ever, ever give it to anyone. Uh, general good practices. Make sure you do not share any uh, software, especially intellectual property or any movies or any uh, software that is copyrighted and properly dispose of any of your old hardware and documents. Do not just leave them laying out or put them in the garbage. The thing that's going to be important for each of us is to understand that we have to be aware, not just of our surroundings, not just about where we work. We're in a top institution in the United States. What that means is, is that we are the target of curiosity. We are the target of the um, news media wanting to get a hold of any soundbite they can. And we are the target of any possible um, r review, uh, scrutiny, audit, uh, OCR, uh, California Department of Public Health, I could go on and on and on. The point here is each of us, and I'm, I'm trying to stress this in a way that makes the most sense, each of us has to be aware that we have to keep up with the happenings in the security world. To do that, what we've done in IT security is we've created an IT security awareness site. Now, you're going to say, oh, that's cheesy. It's really not. The IT security awareness program, security awareness training and education, is designed around telling you what the latest events are. And while it tells you what those events are, it gives you the opportunity to take a quiz on the material that you're learning. 
The reason for this is so that you secondarily get it. In other words, you're going to see it or hear about it on the radio, in the newspaper, online, watching CNN, wherever you get your news from, you're going to hear about this stuff. What we're trying to do is bolster the learning as a program. And oh yes, I forgot to mention, wait, there's more. Everyone gets a prize. There's a monthly grand prize drawing. There's um, uh, coffee cards. There are uh, gizmos and uh, tchotchkes, things that are given out that are uh, useful. And it'll have a, a logo and an emblem on it. And it'll have uh, like a little saying on it so that you can remember that month's security awareness program. Um, the, the reason for all of this is to keep us on the forefront of awareness. Now, you might say, well, why pay attention to all of that? Go back to the first slide and think about what we were talking about. There are fines. The fines are in the seven digits. That is millions of dollars. That's one reason. Second reason isn't just for the money, because the money could hurt the institution. It can also hurt the credibility of the institution. In other words, in the world of HIPAA, there's a thought that if you can't keep the privacy of the patient information behind your electronic health record system, what you've essentially done is you've allowed the bad guys to get it, then your ability to maintain goodwill in the community is going to be diminished. In other words, our reputation as a university, as a leader in universities, is going to be diminished. So please pay attention to security, not just from an awareness perspective, but also their, the UC Learning Center has the formal security awareness training. I encourage everyone to be involved and participate in the monthly, uh, monthly awareness program. Some of the resources that we need to talk about, very, very simply, the IT service desk is at um, the, the web, on the intranet, on the internet. It's also available via phone, 514-4100. You'll hear me quote that quite a bit. Um, the security site has information about policy, procedure, practice, best practice, and uh, standards and guidelines that might be helpful if you're trying to roll out a research project or if you're trying to uh, understand. If, if you can't find exactly what you're looking for, by all means, send an email to security at ucsf.edu and we'll get back to you very quickly most of the time. Um, the UCSF Police Department obviously is there for emergencies, but if you have a problem like a lost or a stolen device, I encourage you to call 415-476-6911. And that is my security talk. I'm Tim Hoffman, IT Security Lead from IT Security.